I picked up 5 GPU for just $150. And honestly, in today's market, buying 5 graphics cards for that price almost sounds impossible. What makes this even crazier is that a few of these cards were actually top-tier models, the kind of GPU that were highly sought after when they launched and are still loved by a lot of people today. But I wouldn't call myself lucky, and here's why. Every single one of these GPU is either broken or has some kind of issue the seller couldn't fix, which is exactly why they were sold so cheap. This all started about five days ago when I randomly stumbled upon a post from someone selling all five cards together. The moment I saw the price, I didn't hesitate, and I messaged the seller immediately. After some back and forth, we finally agreed on $150. Five days later, the package finally showed up. Everything arrived packed inside a new all-in-one liquid cooler box, which honestly made me a little nervous at first, but thankfully it wasn't just a cooler inside. Each GPU was individually wrapped and packed pretty carefully. At first glance, all five cards are full-size GPUs, and seeing two MSI gaming models in there was what made me pull the trigger in the first place. But now comes the real question. Do any of these actually work? Or did I just spend $150 on five very expensive pieces of metal? Let's start with our first unlucky victim. A large GPU with just a single fan, the AMD Radeon HD 7750, originally released back in 2012. To be honest, there's nothing particularly special about it. This was a budget GPU aimed squarely at everyday users, and visually, it's pretty boring. The IO shield is discolored, the screws are heavily rusted, and the PCB and components look seriously worn out. But then, wait a second, what is this? Yeah, I'm pretty confident no manufacturer would ship a card like this. This thing has definitely been repaired before, and not in a very professional way. Still, let's hope it holds together and actually works. On the first boot, I tried the HDMI port first, but no signal at all. Maybe it was just dust from sitting unused for too long, so I cleaned it with a brush and a bit of contact cleaner. Still nothing. Next, I tried the DVI port. No luck there either. At this point, there was only one last option left, VGA. This was literally my final hope. And thank God the monitor finally picked up a signal. I didn't waste any time and booted straight into Windows. But there was an obvious problem. The GPU had no drivers installed, so the resolution and graphics looked absolutely terrible. So the next step was clear. First, I used DDU to completely remove any old drivers, just to avoid potential issues. Then I went to Gigabyte's website and downloaded the correct driver. Luckily, the installation went smoothly. No errors, no crashes, and suddenly the system jumped straight to 1080p resolution. Opening GPU-Z, I finally got the answer. This card is part of the AMD Radeon HD 7700 series. It comes with 2GB of GDDR3 RAM. I ran Heaven Benchmark at medium settings, and the result was 12.5 FPS with a score of 314. Not impressive at all, but honestly, the fact that it completed the benchmark without crashing already deserves some credit. Still, benchmarks only tell part of the story. What I really wanted to know was, how does it handle actual games? So I switched to a stronger test PC and jumped straight into Cyberpunk 2077, running at low settings. The goal here wasn't smooth gameplay, it was to find the absolute limit of this GPU. FPS was definitely low, but surprisingly the card kept going. I tested it for a long time, and it stayed stable. No crashes, no shutdowns. Next, I moved on to Minecraft. At 8 chunks with shaders enabled, it ran, but performance wasn't anything special. Once I turned shaders off, though, things improved a lot. FPS jumped to around 170, and the game finally felt smooth. Overall, this GPU is really only suitable for light games at Full HD. Normally, cards like this are listed for around $40, but because three of its display outputs are dead, its current value is closer to $20. As for long-term reliability, honestly, that's something no one can guarantee. But considering everything it's been through, the fact that it still works at all is kind of impressive. This next GPU is the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti with 4 gigabytes of RAM originally released back in 2016. Honestly, this one barely needs an introduction. It's famous for its reliability, stable performance, and extremely low power consumption, pulling just 75 watts. From the outside, there's really nothing to complain about. The PCB looks clean, the components are evenly colored, and there are no obvious signs of re-soldering or sketchy repairs. But looks have never been a reliable way to judge whether a GPU is actually alive. So, I plug it in, power on, and hope for the best. 
Oh, the fan spins. That's usually a good sign, but then nothing on the screen. I tried cleaning the display outputs with contact cleaner. No luck. Switched through every output port, still nothing. At this point, I was genuinely confused. Then I took a closer look, and that's when I spotted it. A small component, honestly, I don't even know its exact name, completely burned black. Yeah, that's probably the smoking gun. So this card is officially dead for now. My next step is to hand it over to someone who actually knows GPU level repair and see if it can be revived. And if it can't be saved, well, I guess I'll be selling it for parts. With a lot of disappointment, we say goodbye to the second GPU and move on to patient number three. At first glance, this one gives me a lot of reasons to worry. But at the same time, there are a few things that stand out in a good way. The plastic shroud is still fully intact. No cracks or broken corners. The PCB actually looks pretty clean. And despite being used for about four to five years, it doesn't look abused at all. You can even see the seller sticker still on it, showing it was in use around 2021. Here's the weird part though, the model label is completely gone, so I have no clear idea what exact GPU this is. Design-wise, it looks very similar to AMD's RX 500 series cards, but after searching online, I realized a lot of different models share this exact same design. So yeah, I can't confidently identify it just by looks. Now here comes the biggest red flag. This GPU is missing two display outputs, both HDMI and DisplayPort are gone, the only thing left is DVI, so realistically, this is its last chance. I don't want to test your patience any longer. Let's plug it straight into the test system and find out what this card actually is. And more importantly, is it still alive or completely dead? I honestly couldn't believe it. It posted instantly. Not only that, it even automatically updated the drivers. Opening GPU-Z, there it was, an Radeon RX 570 with 8GB of RAM. At this point, the card looks almost perfect. If you ignore the fact that two of its display outputs are dead, now it's time for the real test. I started with Heaven Benchmark, but yeah, I celebrated way too early. The GPU couldn't even finish the test. The screen kept going completely black over and over again. On the second attempt, I realized the issue was tied to DirectX 11, which usually points straight to a driver problem. So, the plan was clear. Wipe everything. I completely removed all existing drivers, then installed a fresh, clean driver from scratch. About 10 minutes later, everything looked a lot better. Back to heaven benchmark we go. This time, no black screens, no errors, no crashes. After about 5 minutes, the GPU finally completed the test with a score of 2200 and an average FPS of 87 at medium settings. At that moment, it really felt like this GPU had been brought back to life by the new driver. And now, it's time for the real challenge. Let's throw some seriously graphics-heavy games at it and see if this card can actually hold its ground. The first game up is Cyberpunk 2077. Running at full HD with low settings, the GPU delivers around 50 to 60 FPS. What's even more impressive is the 1% low, which stays at around 43 FPS. That tells us one important thing. This GPU is still very stable, even under heavy load. Temperatures are also under control, sitting at around 70 degrees Celsius, which is well within a safe and acceptable range. Overall, this is a surprisingly solid result for a card that almost didn't make it back alive. So how does it do in Minecraft? With the render distance set to 32 chunks, just running around in a forest, FPS sits around 350, and in some moments it even spikes past 700, which honestly surprised me. Beyond just raw FPS, the overall smoothness is really impressive. This GPU also does a great job with render acceleration, which makes everything feel very responsive. When I switch to shaders at 8 chunks, performance drops quite a bit, but it still holds around 60 FPS. And for most casual players, that's more than comfortable. At current prices, used GPUs like this usually go for around $60 on eBay, but because this card only has one working display output, its value drops to about 40 bucks. After testing it, we got pretty lucky. Some GPUs that look broken on the surface actually just have minor issues and can still work perfectly fine. Now the big question is, will that luck carry over to the next two GPU? They look almost identical on the outside, but their fates couldn't be more different. All right, let's move on to GPU number four and see what story it has to tell. This next one is a full-on gaming card from MSI, and it's a big one. We're looking at the GeForce GTX 1070 with 8GB of RAM. Back when it launched, this card was often called the Dragon Knight, a perfect gatekeeper to 1440p gaming. 
built to stand right at the entrance to higher-end PC gaming. At first glance, there aren't many obvious weaknesses. The only thing that stands out immediately is a bent heat pipe, likely caused by a pretty hard impact at some point. Hopefully that didn't affect anything internally, but once I looked closer, yeah, things started getting a bit worrying. The PCIe connector shows signs of burn marks with a small scratch right next to it. And it doesn't stop there. The display ports are heavily rusted, suggesting this card has gone through some serious oxidation. So yeah, this GPU has clearly lived a rough life. All right, let's plug it into the motherboard and find out the only thing that really matters now. Is it still alive? All right, power button time. Come on, come on, I can, please give me something. Oh my God, I mean, it's alive. We've got a display. But yeah, this is only the beginning. I'm not celebrating yet, not until it proves it can actually hold a certain level of performance. And sure enough, the celebration didn't last long. Not long after booting, the screen started filling up with weird visual artifacts all over the place. At that point, my first thought was obvious. This looks like a varom related issue. So I decided to take it apart and see what was going on inside. I won't bore you with the full teardown. I'll fast forward that part. Once I got it open, the problems became pretty clear. There were signs of moisture damage, oxidation, and rust on multiple components. That's definitely not a good sign. I used a heat gun to gently warm the board, mainly to help reinforce the solder joints and drive out any remaining moisture. As for the VRAM chips themselves, I didn't see anything immediately alarming. All right, time to put everything back together. Now comes the real question. After all that, does it still work? Let's test it one more time. It looks like luck finally ran out on this one. The screen is still covered in dense vertical lines and heavy artifacts, no matter what I try. I tested every single display output and unfortunately, nothing changed. At this point, it's pretty clear that all my efforts were in vain. So yeah, I, I think this is where this card story ends, but I'm curious. If you think this issue might still be fixable, let me know down in the comments. And if not, well, sometimes even legends don't get a second chance. To save some time, let's move straight to the final card. It's the same model as the previous one, so I won't go over the specs again. Visually, there's nothing too crazy to talk about, but compared to the last card, this one looks way cleaner and more intact. All right, no more waiting. Let's test it. Hold on. The fans are spinning. No way, no way. Okay, we've got a display, that's already a great sign. Quick software check, and yep, this is indeed a GeForce GTX 1070 with 8 gigabytes of RAM. After letting it run for a while, I still don't see any strange behavior. No artifacts, no crashes, so I didn't hesitate. Straight into heaven benchmark, and again, no way. The benchmark completed without a single issue, scoring 3,488 points and averaging 138 FPS at medium settings. Now let's move on to a real-world test with Cyberpunk 2077, running at low settings. At first, the card was pushing around 80 FPS, which is honestly an impressive number for such a graphics-heavy game. But after about 10 minutes of gameplay, problems started to show up. The screen suddenly went completely black. And just to be clear, I was using a 700-watt power supply, more than enough to handle this GPU. So power delivery from the PSU wasn't the issue. At this point, I'm pretty confident the problem is coming from the GPU's own power circuitry. To work around it, I capped the FPS at 50, forcing the GPU to work less and draw less power. And surprisingly, that actually helped. The black screen issue was greatly reduced. I saw the same behavior in Minecraft, so I applied the same fix there, FPS cap again. With that in place, the GPU ran stable at around 60 to 70% load, pulling roughly 130 watts. That's probably this card's biggest flaw. I also tested all the display outputs. All display port ports are dead, unfortunately. The good news is that HDMI and DVI still work, so running dual monitors is still possible. Because of these limitations, I'll likely keep this card for light gaming or everyday tasks, rather than pushing it hard and demanding titles. Not perfect, but at least now I know exactly where its limits are. So to wrap everything up, after buying and testing five different GPUs, the biggest thing I got out of this whole experience was the emotional roller coaster. It was honestly a lot of fun. On top of that, I managed to add three GPUs to my collection. Sure, none of them are perfect. Some of them are basically partially disabled cards, but for the money I spent, it wasn't a bad deal at all. Was it an insane bargain? Not really. 
but the experience itself was absolutely worth it. I really hope this video helps you make smarter decisions when buying used GPUs and avoid ending up with low quality or risky hardware. As for me, $150 isn't something I'm going to lose sleep over. Thanks a lot for sticking with me until the end of the video. If you found this useful, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe, it really helps the channel.